morning. Why well, am I out here at the crack of dawn? I gotta try and figure out how to do this video without losing you guys because I really want you to stick through this video because I hope you'll learn something. I'm gonna touch on several different subjects. Number one, I'm gonna talk about why the fertilizers that we use and recommend are so mild. Why do they have fine particles and why are they all mild? We'll talk about that next. We're gonna talk about the myths that synthetic fertilizers kill your soil biology and microbes. Total myth. We're gonna cover that and I'll prove it to you. I'll show you a cool video clip. Talk a little bit about the difference between organics and synthetics and I'm gonna to touch on, a little bit later in the video, I'll touch on the different fertilizers and when you can use them, when you should use them, because there are different times of the years when you're gonna do different things, like we're gonna focus on fertilizers at one point and then we're gonna switch over to soil health. I'll take you up to the garden, heck, maybe I'll even show you this new fire pit we made from a bunch of junk we had. Here we go, hold on. And one of the great debates is whether or not synthetic fertilizer is harming one of these 50,000 species of microbes that are in a teaspoon of soil. And I'm pretty darn passionate about this because my thesis was on the differences between organic and conventional farming and the effect that they have on the soil. So when it comes to looking at the soil nutrients from a soil scientist perspective, the first question is, can I tell the difference between nitrate that is organic and inorganic, phosphate that's organic or inorganic, and all the list of the 17 essential plant nutrients. And the answer to this, drum roll please, absolutely not. That is not even a debate. We cannot tell the difference where that nitrogen has come from, where that phosphate has come from. We can't. We just simply can't look at it from that perspective. So on to the next point. Number two is the salt. Everyone's always hung up on the salt in synthetic fertilizers. And I don't know where this came from. It was probably an influencer's fault to be honest, but the salt in synthetic fertilizer is not the salt you're thinking about. If you're thinking of saline soil where no, nothing grows or you're thinking of table salt, you would be entirely wrong. When we're referencing salt in a synthetic fertilizer, we're referencing the chemistry definition of salt of when a acid and a base come together and form a molecule. That is a salt for all intents and purposes. It has nothing to do with salt. So because of that organic fertilizer, and in organic fertilizer, both have salt. And if we over apply either of these compounds, we can end up with some issues. And let me clarify, the issues have nothing to do with the salt. The issues have to do with the over application of those nutrients. And I have so many videos on how each nutrient can be over applied and what kind of damage it can actually do to your crop. So I'm gonna read you two little articles that are completely opposite ends of the spectrum. Let me read you this first. This was a blog post title, Synthetic Fertilizers Kill Soil Life and Cause Nutrient Deficiencies. I was like, okay, let me read this. When it comes to toxic farming chemicals, most people think of pesticides and herbicides. But it turns out synthetic fertilizers can do just as much harm as soil life. Just like pesticides, synthetic fertilizers kill soil microorganisms, which makes it difficult or impossible for soil microbe to function properly. In the process, synthetic fertilizers cause major economic, health, and environmental problems, including they cause dependency on fertilizer companies, water pollution, harmful synthetic nitrates, synthetic deplete the soil, synthetic fertilizers deplete the soil of nutrients. The list goes on and on. Okay, so this is from a blogger who actually isn't a, actually a fairly intelligent person, but you can tell that this is a narrative or an agenda. And especially when you go look at the other articles that she's posted, how to overcome rejection and reclaim your power, how to make friends everywhere you go, how to make peace with your past self and love your insecurities. And I'm like, Dude, so how do we battle this? Well, let's go to well, let's go to one of the largest studies ever done. Now, this is a meta-analysis. What is a meta-analysis? A meta-analysis takes in all kinds of studies that have been done over the years, takes all that information, compresses it, and what it does is it actually looks at, okay, what's the real story here over the long term? So this is interesting. Washington State University, their soil, ag, and science division. A meta-analysis combines data from multiple studies and reanalyzes the combined data. Synthetic fertilizers are implicated in killing soil, killing the soil. We are again fortunate to have received meta-analysis of 107 data sets 
from 64 long-term trials. The duration of these trials lasted from 5 to 130 years, averaging 37 years from around the world. They concluded that mineral fertilizer applications led to a 15.1% increase in the microbial biomass above levels in unfertilized control treatments. It goes on. Mineral fertilization has increased soil carbon, um, blah, blah, blah. All the positive effects. So why is this out there that somehow synthetic fertilizers are bad? I'm just telling you, it's just people that have a certain narrative that they're trying to go. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna touch on the fact, hopefully you've watched this video, and that there really is, there isn't a laboratory in the world that can tell the difference between <laughs> nitrogen that was produced from a synthetic versus an organic. I do a lot of work out here, especially on this farm property. Our vegetable garden, one of the reasons why we do this huge vegetable garden up here is not for us. It's, it's mainly just to show that if you don't want to use synthetic fertilizers, you can go natural, you can use organics. But one of the things we do out there, we focus on soil health. Now I take that soil health that we do up in the garden and we also apply it to our lawns. So a big portion of what I do and what I recommend is mild fertilizers. I can't stress that enough. If you look at all the fertilizers that I recommend or have helped uh, work with Andersons to develop or bring to you guys on a consumer level, you're not gonna see any fertilizers that are really strong. As an example, PGF Complete is a 1648. That's a pretty mild fertilizer. PGF Balance is a 101010. Super fine particles, mild fertilizer. Green Shocker, a 712 with the smallest particle size in the industry. Instant release, mild fertilizer. The only one that really isn't a mild fertilizer uh, is probably DGL because that's an all fast release. You can put it out very, very, you put out a small amount. One little bag will treat 5,000 to 7,000 square feet. It's all instant, it's just a little nitrogen push. So there are very specific reasons why we do this. And because the majority of lawns don't need a lot of fer uh, fertilizer. They don't need a lot of nutrients. So let me give you an example. This is perennial rye. And for the past eight weeks, I've been putting down a little bit of green chakra on here. That's pretty much it. The other thing about three or four weeks, about three or four weeks ago, I put down the first base coat of PGF complete. And that's it. The lawn looks beautiful, it doesn't need any more nutrients. What I'm doing is I'm focusing on the soil health. I'm doing spike aerations, I'm making sure that it gets water. I'm cutting it a lot and I'm returning all those clippings to the ground. It looks gorgeous, I don't need to do anything. And that's kind of my point. Learn, we really emphasize, we really emphasize spoon feeding your lawn, taking a mild fertilizer and putting it out at smaller increments. Instead of taking something like a 35, 20 and dumping it down and consistently putting down a whole bunch of nutrients. Again, mild treatments. Okay, so let me take a minute and let's talk about are there negatives to organics? Believe it or not, there are some negatives. Let me talk about that for a minute. So this is our big, uh, somewhere around 6,000 square foot vegetable garden. I have 10 rows. This garden can produce an easy 6,000 pounds of produce a year. So 6,000 times $1.50, that's $9,000 worth of produce. And the reason why I say that is someone said, Doc, you're spending $1,000 on Dirt Booster. And I don't do that for us. I do that for you guys. I'm retired. I can play around, have fun, do experiments. Um, I could literally, my wife and I could literally live on two rows and I have 10. We have thousands of pounds of produce. Matter of fact, this year I'm going to cut back. Last year was just way too much. So what about the negatives? What are the negative implications? The negative implications of organics is that you can't control it. What does that mean? A synthetic fertilizer, I can come out here and test and I can find exactly what my soil readings are. And I can find, let's say I'm high on potassium, or excuse me, high on phosphorus. So what I can do is I can put down a fertilizer, NPK, P is the phosphorus, I want zero there, I want my N and I want my K, I want my N at 20 and I want my K at five. I can manipulate that with a synthetic fertilizer and exactly control the nutrient input that I want. I can also control exactly when I want it. The problem with organic fertilizers is you can't control that. 
If you use an organic fertilizer, it's some kind of organic matter that breaks down and releases in a set amount of nutrients. Here's a problem that one of the scientists who, who specializes in organic fertilizers, here's what he found. The problem, especially like if you use um, regular manure, even if you compost it, is very high in phosphorus. And so if you're continually doing that, continually doing that, your fields will actually grow extremely high in phosphorus. You can actually get phosphorus runoff and actually cause problems. So understand that when you put down an organic, there's no control. It releases what it wants to release. When you use a synthetic, you control what gets put down. So that is one of the problems with organics is there's no control versus synthetic. Okay, so I'm gonna roll through the fertilizers real quick and when you might use them. <laughs> PGF Balance. Oh, this is a bag of PGF Balance. It's a 10, 10, 10. Again, super, super fine particle. It's the only 10, 10, 10 on the market that is designed really for lawns. Particle distribution is so key. Particles per square inch or particles per foot. If you have a fertilizer and you see these big round balls in there, don't use it. You want to have tons of particles per square foot. That's why all these have super fine particles. 10, 10, 10. I mainly use the 10, 10, 10 about the time my lawn is about to come out of dormancy. My lawn is sitting out here all winter long. It's getting leached out. It's getting wet. I put out a little bit of nutrients. The lawn wakes up and there's a little bit of nutrients. Usually I do that about the time I put out my pre-emergent. That's when I do it. Now let's go to the base core fertilizer. The base core fertilizer is PGF Complete 1648 with humichar, iron, micronutrients. So, PGF complete, that's the fertilizer. Once your grass starts to grow, that's what you're gonna put down. It's a slow release fertilizer. It's mild again. You'll put it down, it's gonna give your lawn everything that it needs. Slow release, it's gonna feed for four to six weeks. Let's say your grass starts to wake up and starts to green and you do a scalp and you're like, man, I really wanna push my lawn a little bit. You don't really need to put down maybe more PGF complete. What your lawn is wanting is nitrogen. So that's why this year, this is the mystery bag. <laughs> this is the only bag in existence of DGL, dark green lawn. And basically I asked Andersons to develop this. And what I wanted, I wanted an all fast release nitrogen fertilizer that was small particles. So, Here's what you're gonna see. You're gonna see tiny, tiny particles because the only fertilizers that you can find that's all nitrogen, that's all fast release, is this cheap farm fertilizer that looks like big round white marbles. It's horrible. So DGL, when it comes out here in the next couple weeks, that's what it's gonna look like. And what we did to prove the point on these cool season, cold winter grasses, I put down lines out here and the lines that where we put down this DGL were two to three times as tall and twice as dark as everything else that was out here. It's pretty incredible. So if you go into a push zone, as I call it, so if I'm going into, let's say January, February, March, uh, April, let's say May for warm season grasses, I wanna push my lawn so it chokes out all these weeds. And I've already put down some PGF complete. You can put down a light coat of DGL, some extra nitrogen to push that lawn. Got it? That's how I'm gonna use that. That's what I'm gonna use that. It's a great fertilizer just for that extra little shot of nitrogen. Green Chalker. Green Chalker is probably one of my favorite products. Now this is extremely mild. This is a 712 and this is the smallest size particle in the industry. It looks like black salt. It, as soon as you wet it, it turns into a liquid and goes right in. It's an immediate release, all fast release. Where do I use that and why do I use that? You don't want to put down like a, a 30 0 10 in the middle of summertime because it's just too strong. But let's say in the middle, of, it's starting to get warm, you want to put down a mild fertilizer, you can put down Green Shocker. I use this especially around waterways so around my pond the only thing i put down is green shocker and why because it goes right into the soil i water it in and it doesn't matter how much rain i get once it gets into that soil that's it it's in there 
it won't wash off. If I use a big chunky slow release fertilizer and it rains for three days, that fertilizer is going to continue to melt, continue to melt. Those nutrients, once the soil gets saturated, are going to run off into the waterways and into my ponds. I'm spoon feeding that out here and it does fantastic. So those are the basic things for fertilizer. Now I'm going to do a soil health video and we'll cover what we're doing with dethatching, with core aeration, spike aeration, putting down products like Dirt Booster, which are fantastic for warm, the warm, hot weather, putting down Humachar. We'll talk about all that. And don't forget, we cover a lot of this in the lawn guides, so get the lawn guides. i got a bunch more videos coming out. So uh, anyways, that's it. Have a great day. Duh.